You having a good loop so far? Yes, good. Um, I was at Loop in Berlin last year, and it's the, just the exact same wonderful energy of being able to talk to anybody that you see here and have an amazing conversation about music and creativity. Um, this is uh, called Start Here, and what we're doing is looking at a number of examples of um, how people have worked with the exact same source material to create something completely different. Uh, but I guess I'll introduce myself before we get right into it. My name is Andrew Huang. I do uh, a lot of different things. I work with a lot of different genres of music, but the, the kind of main thing I'm doing is I run a YouTube channel where I explore my creative process. I do weird musical experiments, and uh, one of the most successful experiments I've done is this series called Four Producers Flip the Same Sample, and I get a few producers together. We uh, all take one little snippet of audio and go and, and work with it, make something out of it, use it as the foundation of either a remix or a completely new track from that one uh, piece of audio. And so uh, after the first episode in that series went up, Ableton got in touch and uh, had the idea that we could do it live from Loop, but also uh, as like a worldwide thing. So we're live streaming right now. We're gonna share a few of the examples that came in, but uh, we posted this sample yesterday at noon Pacific, and uh, we gave everyone until midnight to create something with it, uh, including me and the two guests that I'm about to bring on. We had not heard it before. We were working uh, with the same time restraints as everybody else. Um, we had almost exactly 800 submissions. <laughs> Um, which is incredible. And they're from around the world. Uh, I'm gonna be playing some stuff from India, from Brazil. It's the whole reason I do this challenge um, is to see the diversity and the beauty of people's approach to their creativity and to their music making. So uh, I think we should play the sample. Front of House has got it. So that's a 28 second piece of audio by an artist called Flora Yin Wong um, that she created especially for this project. And that's what we posted yesterday at noon that uh, these 800 people created something around. So uh, I'm gonna introduce two guests who also uh, produced tracks with it. Um, please welcome Nick Weiss and Ebony Smith. Hi, how is everybody? Uh, my name is Ebony Smith. Uh, I work as an engineer and a music producer and audio engineer. Um, and I also run a nonprofit organization called Gender Amplify, which supports women producers and audio engineers working in recording studios. Um, my name is Nick Weiss. Um, I also go by Night Feelings. Um, I'm a producer and also engineer. Um, and I started out in a band called Teen Girl Fantasy. It's like a electronic duo. Um, and since then I've just been producing with other artists like LaFonda who's performing here in a few hours um, and a bunch of other people. All right, here we go. So first and foremost, I named the track after my mother, you know, LaTanya. So here we go.
That was cool. What can you tell us about how you worked with that sample? Oh, well, um, the first thing is, you know, I listened to it and just tried to think to myself, how can I make it into a style that makes sense to me? You know, something that I may even want to use, like for an artist. Um, so the first thing I wanted to do was chop the sample up into little bitty pieces and use those pieces as percussive elements. So I like to use a tool called Serato Sample, which basically allowed me to uh, create really small chops of the sample. And then what I really love about Serato Sample is it will allow me to play them chromatically. So by hitting this little piano icon, it allows me to actually find maybe some notes in the sample, which is cool. Uh, if I don't have this piano part selected, then I can play each of the individual slices of the sample. So the intro and some of the other elements that you hear in the track are actually really, really fine chops of the sample, which is how I usually like to work with samples. So for example, this little intro is just something that is just something that I filtered up, but it was basically a performance of the actual sample chopped into little bitty pieces. So that was one thing that allowed me to actually find some sort of key. So once I was able to play the sample kind of chromatically, I came up with some sort of melodic arrangements that allowed me to narrow down a key of like B minor. So after that, I just tuned all the drums to that and also tuned the piano parts that I played to that as well. So you hear for example, this electric piano part that kind of comes halfway through um, that is kind of around the key of B minor. Um, so it's able to try, you know, create some sort of melodic structure because I didn't really hear a ton of uh, melodic or chordal elements in the actual sample itself. But using Serato sample in that way allowed me to kind of find some sort of tones. So that was kind of my approach for that. That's super cool. Yeah. It's interesting to me the, that um, the, you know your intro comes entirely from the sample, and you like played a part of it, and you filtered it up. And I wasn't even sure when I was hearing it that it was from the sample. I, I, I couldn't tell, and I think that's one of the the beautiful things about sampling. And and one of the things that might be misunderstood about sampling is that it's not necessarily just like let's take these eight bars and make it you know from a '70s funk track and make it the hook to this hip hop anthem, but that there's so much manipulation that can happen uh, to, to really transform something and make it your own. Um, yeah, was there anything else you wanted to share about? Um, I guess for me, you know, everything has, I, I try to break myself from it, but typically I end up making everything hip hop, <laughs> hip hop-ish and hip hop-y. So I actually use Ultra Beat to come up with some interesting drum patterns that I like to use. Uh, we can actually go, so the drum patterns and filtering 808s as well is something that I enjoy to do. And what's great about Ultra Beat is it has so many really interesting ways to further manipulate each of your samples. So I like to use Ultra Beat in sample mode because I don't typically use the actual sounds that come with Logic. So I have all my sample packs and I can actually load them up in Ultra Beat um, using the sample input section. And then I have access to all these oscillators and all these different functions and filters, as well as envelopes, uh, low frequency oscillators as well that allow me to further kind of um, sound design those samples. So this is one of my packs that I put together with all my individual samples that I, I think I generically call trap number one, um, which allows me to play all of my samples on one track. Yeah, so yeah, that's it. And like with how uh, the session was yesterday, how are you feeling like was the sample 
a challenge for you, or was it pretty easy to just find something you wanted to do with it? It was fairly easy to find something I wanted to do. Uh, I put a, always when I make tracks, I put a timer on, because I don't like to think too hard about what I'm making. I like to make sure it feels a bit intuitive. So I put an hour on, and the first thing I did was I started with the sample and, and chopping it up and trying to really just work efficiently and not think too hard about how I wanted to approach it, but really just to go by feel. And so putting a timer on allows me to kind of really just use my body and my brain as, you know, like one unit working together as opposed to overthinking and, you know, trying to make something that is so dynamic and, you know, does so much, but just really focusing on just how can I just work quickly and efficiently and, I love that. So you always put one hour on? Not always one hour. Sometimes it's 15 minutes. Sometimes yeah. it's, you know, two hours. It depends on the task at hand. But I know myself. If I can get in some sort of flow very quickly, then I can make something effectively. I think some of my better beats are made in 15 to 30 minutes. So the core of them, at least. Maybe the mixing takes a little longer, but the feel is what I'm always trying to establish very quickly. Because for me, I'm a dancer, I like to dance, and I try to make music that people can instantly feel that gratification from. And it doesn't take a person to that long, especially a dancer, to figure out they like the beat, right? So I like to try to establish something very rhythmic and, and that has some sort of emotion and passion very quickly, and then kind of fine tune the rest of the elements after that. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. The floor is yours if you want to play your All right. Um, okay, so I made, I had made originally two different bounces of this. One didn't have a guitar solo and one did. And I figured to be festive for this, I'm going to play the guitar solo one. So this is it. So tell us about how you put that together. Um, OK, so I guess similarly to Ebony, I started with um, the sample and trying to see how I could kind of edit it or morph it and create some kind of texture out of it that I could play along to. And the tool that I used for that is called um, M Rhythmizer. It's kind of similar if, if anyone's ever used Fruity Loops, the gross beat like Whoa. function, you know. Um, and it has like similar, it, it kind of like has all different um, functions that you can mess with. And what's cool is you can, uh, basically it has like stutters, repeats, reverses, filters, like any other, any kind of effect. And they're all on like little timeline in like a four bar loop and you can also do different effects on each uh, band of EQ so like you could make the low end like gate in a certain pattern and have the high end stuttering and have the mid range in reverse so make it crazy um, and so like I started out 
taking um, these two pieces of uh, the sample and um, running it through that. And then I also used um, in Sound Toys this effect track that does kind of like a gating pattern. It's like a preset called Heavy Cuts. It has like a weird pattern that it adds to the... And I was kind of like, I recorded, um, I recorded from this channel while I was like playing around with the mix of it to kind of like make it go from full to like choppy. Um, and then I, so yeah, I recorded that audio and then I st stuttered it more. Um, and I was just really into that one little, so I just kind of did that over and over. Um, and then at the, and then um, I figured like, with all that textural stuff that it needed some kind of grounding. So that then I um, added the bass line, which is just like a omnisphere bass that I ran through some distortion to give it more depth and make it super heavy. Um, and then along with that, I played a little lead also in Omnisphere. Um. Um, and I distorted that too. I bit crushed it. Um, yeah, and then kind of like towards the midsection, I was like, okay, I got to use the sample more. And so I, um, took this one piece of it and um, also distorted it really hard um, with just like the Ableton saturator on the hard mode, which I think is really fun. We're just like making something extremely loud. And I also had it side chaining hard to the kit. Um, and yeah, the last thing was kind of like adding in the guitar. I was texting with Yasmin, who goes by La Fonda, um, who I work with a lot. And I didn't play her anything, but I was like, oh, I, I'm working on this. I don't know. I need to do something with it. I want to add something extra. And I had already been messing around with like some super distorted kind of guitar-ish sounding thing. And she's like, you should do a guitar solo. Um, and so I did. Used uh, this like contact thing called goth guitar that has, it's pretty sick. Um, and just like, I don't know, messed around with it tried to like make it also sidechain really hard for fun. And yeah, when I sent, I s sent both versions to my partner and his sister and they were like, you should definitely use the guitar version. So I don't know. That's how it. did you find um, working with it? Like, how did you get into it? Was it uh, challenging? Was it a struggle? <laughs> I did think it was challenging, actually. I mean, I thought it was a super cool piece of music, um, but it was also really dense. Um, and I feel like I already like produce in a pretty dense way. Like, I'm kind of maximalist in a way. Um, and, uh, like, there was just so many elements going on at one time. I was like, oh, I don't know how I can pick out one thing to like one discrete thing. Cause usually I feel like with a sample, I kind of like, I'm looking for like one little hook that I'm just obsessed with and just want to like loop over and over. And this was more like, I guess kind of like sound design of kind of taking 
this tone that I thought was pretty, like I, I thought it was a really beautiful um, ambience to the beginning of the sample. And I was like, oh, I, I just want to find a way to extend that without like cluttering it too much with all the other stuff in the sample. So I just, that was why I, I just kind of repeated the beginning over and over and like put all the different effects on it to like give it some rhythm and texture. Is that like different that. from how you normally approach sampling? I, I guess so. I mean, when I sampled in the past, like with my band and stuff, sometimes I would just take um, like whole acapellas and like build tracks out of them and like not even chop them up that crazy, just kind of like almost like remixing or like finding, usually I'll find like if I am sampling like a four bar loop that I just kind of let loop forever and kind of build off of that. Um, but I actually sample less and less now in general when I'm producing just because when stuff gets released, it's like scary if you have uncleared samples in there, which I definitely have. Um, so, but uh, yeah, it's super, I like the sound design aspect of doing this. I thought it was really fun. It was cool. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Yeah, so <laughs> this was a, a weird one for me because the sample was so, there was so much to it, I felt like, and, and um, kind of like what Nick was saying, like there's a lot of different layers going on. It's not exactly the kind of thing where you're like, oh, this part really stands out and I want to work with it in a certain way. Um, so the, the first thing I did was I just like brought the whole thing into Ableton and I just cut out individual pieces that I thought could become a musical element. So like, there's a pretty clean chord, or uh, here's like that seagull noise. Um, or like the, the drums, there are some really cool drums happening that I just chopped into like the tiniest pieces so that I, I didn't keep too much of the ambience of the track behind them, but like this and this. I kind of stacked together with um, another snare drum. Oh. So that's like the snare at the, the start of the track. And um, another piece that I treated like that was the kick, which was made out of one of those tom hits. And I just like severely EQ'd it, put some uh, Waves R bass on there to really beef it up. Ableton Saturator, love that thing. Oh, and I like pitch automated. I'm like forgetting that I did all this because we were working so fast on this thing. So I pitch automated the sample to just like dive down, which is kind of like a, a kick thing. You get that like, ooh, laser beam sort of vibe. 
Um, and uh, the other, the kind of foundation of the track were these two loops that I made out of the chord sounding parts of the track. So I just sliced something up and uh, did a little filtering to make this. And then I also made this loop. And um, I kind of, <laughs> I had two different ideas that I, that I developed based on those as the foundation. And I, she sort of, in classic Andrew fashion, I was like, let's not pursue one of these. Let's do them both and see how we can mash them together, which is how the kind of middle part happened where I took the sample and just like, made this transition, which is just uh, all these automated envelopes on the transposition and the grain size um, in Ableton's uh, clip mode there. And then there's a layer of this uh, static sound from the original that I didn't do too much with. Um, I used a couple like random bits for just like a little stab of atmosphere sometimes. That's just the sample pitched up a bit with some reverb on it. Um, so I, I structured it around those kinds of sounds and, and those two main loops that I made and I just felt like uh, they, they brought me into the direction that I ended up taking. So the first part is more of this like hip hop loop. And uh, just based on the chords that were in the original sample, I, I created that chord progression. I put an 808 underneath it to support it from the bass. And on the second half, um, this, this loop, The, the chords Flora was using are so like spacey and open and they're almost hard for me to identify anyway because they, they don't feel like they just fit as one major chord or something like that. There, there's a lot of interesting different layers of notes. Um, and so what I found was interesting to do with that was to have the bass move underneath it to imply different chords. And um, once I figured that out, that kind of gave me this idea of this sort of epic uh, place that it could go. Um, I chopped up some of the drums to make this weird loop. So that's all from the sample, and then I felt like I wanted to support it, and I added these um, like kind of cinematic drums. So together they're like this. And um, yeah, once I had that all coming together, Oh, I forgot even to talk about this. I made a little, I tried to make a shaker sound out of part of the sample. And that's just in the background as kind of like a little sprinkle of high-end energy. Um, and this was my favorite thing I did that I forgot to talk about. This was one of the earliest things I did where I was just experimenting with what the sample could sound like. And I took a chunk and I did a little uh, a pitch envelope on it to get this rise sound. And just by accident, there were some of these drum hits at the end of that part of the sample. And uh, I just left them in and there's some delay on that and that just kind of adds a bit more texture to the track, I feel like. But I took that after I had gotten the envelope where I liked it, I layered it up a couple times. And then over here, there's three of them. Oh wait, this one's. Off. 
So that's kind of floating on top of everything. And like once it was together like this. At that point I was like, I just want to add whatever I can to this to support this feeling. So I put this uh, pad sound in. This is from um, Ableton's Wavetable Synth. Just to make sure those chord changes were coming through. And then uh, I sung, I think it's like six layers of, of these ooze to get in there. And then this is my <laughs> favorite little weird addition that I put in. It's like this cheesy xylophone thing that I feel like, um, I actually distinctly remember hearing a sound like this in some movie where like Dustin Hoffman is like walking down the street, it's from the 90s, I don't even know, but it's just always stuck with me as like, here's a, a type of soundtrack music that was used for a very short period of time and like no one would ever go there again, but it's like this dinky xylophone thing. You know? <laughs> and that's like kind of cute and ridiculous, but when you have it mixed in underneath all the other stuff. just like floats there nicely. Um, yeah, so that's what I did. <laughs> um, I think that uh, right now we're gonna get into some of the submissions from uh, online. In the spirit of Ableton, I wanted to start with this one where um, this uh, creator only used the sample and they're from Germany and they're making tech now. from uh, Uyghur Vandenham from Germany. Um, and, and yeah, made entirely with the sample. Like, really cool how he, how he sound designed all that. Um, so I, I wanted to share that as like an example of someone just using a sample. This next one is someone who started from the sample and just used it as like a background loop and, and inspiration for what they eventually created. This is from uh, Luna from Brazil.
I really like this next one. Uh, this is from Ruby Rupindar from India. Um, yeah, it's just really interesting. Check it out. <laughs> yeah, it's totally love not. that. Yeah, that was mental. The groove that was, was so like sick. a five thing, and nice, definitely great bass sounds sound for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, super fun groove. Um, all right, here's another one. Um, th this was the the best example I could find of uh, an approach that was uh, on the more common side, even though all the examples did end up sounding different, but people uh, kind of went with the vibe of the original sample, how spacey it was and how ambient it was, and just like tried to um, structure their own sort of soundscapes out of it. So this is called, uh, this is from Luca Favaro. Cool. That one, like in headphones, is is wild. I love the industrial sounds. Uh, um, the producer was able to find chopping up the sample. That was really great because some of those elements were really cool and percussive, and definitely in their own way, just spatially, just wide. Mm -hmm. It was really cool. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was interesting how far it, it sounds like they took the sample like, you know we don't have uh, their session in front of us but it feels like a lot of it comes from the original and they just really were able to stretch it it's so funny i had it seems so clear to like take an ambient sample like that and create an ambient work from it that did not come to my mind at all when i was doing it but listening to that, i was like oh yeah duh like that makes so much sense it sounds really good that way um, well, so kind of off of that, uh, there is one I wanted to share. Oh, actually, this is from someone who is at Loop. That was one of the, the things on the form that we wanted people to fill out, whether, you're not, whether or not you're at Loop. Is Matthew Wong in the audience? Right there. All right. So um, this one really stood out to me. I had so much fun listening to it. And um, in the form, you said uh, you hadn't ever made this kind of music before. Um, actually, can we get a mic for Matthew? I'm gonna play this and then, and then we'll talk about it.
What can you tell us about making this track? Yeah, I just heard the sample and thought, this is really cool and it sounds like a really nice piece of music on its own. Uh, and I wanted to see how far I could take, um, I don't know, the feeling I had when I first listened to the track and just going the completely opposite way with it and trying to take something that made me calm and pretty happy overall and then see what, I don't know, Trent Reznor uh, inspirations could do to it. Yeah, that's what stood out to me about reading um, what you submitted in the forum was like, well, the sample is so peaceful and ambient, I wanna do the opposite of that. Um, so what parts of it were you using? I, like the drum parts, it seems for sure. Did you go beyond that as well? Yeah, so I, again, so I, actually I think I did it all with audio, putting the audio right into an Ableton uh, session view and then using warping. And um, I also got really into using beats mode and just going like up three octaves or up four octaves or whatever. So it just becomes glitchy and then resampling that. Um, for a lot of those like lead sounds and things like that. Cool. And you also said this isn't the type of music you normally make. What do you normally make? <laughs> uh, well, I'm working as a film composer. Um, so right now I'm working with a composer named Craig Wedren on the music for an NBC show called New Amsterdam, which is very like jazzy and lots of drum heavy stuff. <laughs> awesome, thanks, great work. Uh, here's another example. Um, this is from someone named Alec Fleischer. And they, they also did something interesting with the drums. I thought that one was interesting because it was like, they made it into a break beat. <laughs> I love the bass on that one. Yeah. For yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. It's also cool. Sound really great. Because like, I feel like that, what they chopped up there for those fast beats was the same thing that I used in this little chunk. That I turned into like more of a, I don't know, a, the, the, the snare drum from an orchestra or something like that. And then they, they got this completely other thing out of it. Um, here's one that's just, this was maybe the most bizarre one I came across. I don't know how to describe it. I'm just going to play it.
Um, yeah, it's just like wacky grooves and like really dynamic. Um, the, big, uh, the beginning of it kind of reminded me of um, that Ryuchi Sakamoto album, B2 Unit, like some of his like weirder stuff. It's kind of, it's cool, I liked it. Yeah, it made me think of uh, Arca or Sophie or yeah, yeah, some definitely. of these producers where like there's such an emphasis on texture and, and um, I mean, like, there's there's so little Western harmony, if any, in that, and I find that's a, a really interesting area that's kind of developing in in modern music. All right, uh, three more that I picked out to go through. This one I just uh, it, it it stood out as as being kind of uh, unique among the submissions for where they decided to take it. So this is from Jonathan G. Super dynamic, excellent mix too. Yeah. Excellent mix. Um, and just also just really great EDM track production, I think, that manages to use a, a sample. Yeah, like a sample you would never, you would never think use. To, yeah. to insert right. into that type yeah, of genre. Yeah, for sure. I forgot about the sample completely. <laughs> well, I was like, cool stuff. I mean, I think it's, it sounded really good. It's like yeah. super nice. I liked the chords. It was like, yeah, like I think really the, the chords he brought in were sensibility. Yeah, were from the the track uh, or from the sample as a foundation, and then I noticed the there were some like pitched drums that he was using and kind of distorting. Um, cool. Uh, two more. I, I picked two more that are from uh, people who are at Loop. So, Kyoko Takanaka, are you in the audience? No. All right. Well, we're gonna play your track anyway. sample from I think she's singing I love that yeah it's so it works so perfectly yeah 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 that really stood out as a very unique take on the sample where it sounds like maybe just one piece is kind of looping and filtered but, yeah. that to me had like a super honest emotion to it that I appreciate so much to whoever did that I really loved it yeah yeah it just it, it feels sincere I feel like it that, yes. that really comes through like it's devoid of, like it doesn't have the challenge, like there's no like competition, or not that this was a competition, but like it's, it feels like they were expressing something really heartfelt. Heartfelt, yeah, I loved it. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, all right, so one more example. I saved this for the end because I feel like this most exemplifies what Loop is all about. So this is from Sarah Brown and Tatro. They met yesterday at a studio session and uh, they put this together in uh, a hotel room and uh, yeah, it's just, just wild. It's, it's, it's what Loop's all about. People coming together, making music. Right there. Yeah, we got a mic going and Sarah there. Hey. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Yeah, um, I think we're good. We're quite excited. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, there's no way that they're going to play it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, what was that? We didn't think that you're going to play it. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that one was great. It was um, like there were very few submissions that had vocals. There were very few submissions that took it in like a, a songwriting direction. I thought that was cool. And then in the forum where it's like, oh, yeah, we just met the day of this challenge and made that. Uh, I just thought that was so cool. So tell us about uh, how that came together. So we met at the Tech Beat studio session yesterday. We both happened to be like early for it, sitting on the couch chilling. We sat through the studio session. Then we just got to like talking about the sample challenge. And I was like, hey, do you want to go maybe work on this? Because Sarah had showed me her music on Spotify. I'm like, wow, great singer, great songwriter, great producer. I'm like, I have my laptop. Let's just go make something. Like, I've got a hotel room in Hollywood, and we can go. Like, we didn't have a microphone, so we used, like, my Tascam portable recorder for the vocals. Um, and then we just, like, she took it away with the, the lyrics and stuff right from hearing the sample right away. I started chopping it up. Then she added a bunch of drums in. We kept collaborating on, like, melody ideas. She went out for a little couple hours. I took the samples, chopped it up even more, made some more like leads and stuff. And then by the time she got back to lay down some more vocals, we were ready to go. We submitted it at 11.52 last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. So were you like working on it most of the day? Uh, it was like three hours, four hours that we were working on it. Damn. Yeah, it, it just like, we met, we had this, that track going and um, we immediately came up with ideas and yeah, laid it down. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. What can you tell us about uh, like the specifics of what you did with the sample? We actually did a lot. So we, we didn't use the sampler though, we wanted to. Yeah. We just dropped, so we took uh, specific sounds and then we pitched it in a different way. So for example, you hear that stab in the, in the recording. I don't know if you like this. Dum, dum, dum. Um, <laughs> we took that and then we pitched it and um, once we pitch it with complex, so because we just prefer the tone, and then once we pitch it with texture, so that what we did, like um, choosing the different artificial um, ways of Ableton to get a specific sounds, and then we also messed around with um, what was it? With reverb. Um, we also put the vocals. We had like one vocal line. Um, that had the whole frequency range and then we doubled it and put an equalizer and just had like up to 7K, um, just the high end, put a lot of reverb on that and delay to get like this breathing thing going. And that's something that Sarah taught me like during the session, like it was very funny, like we were both learning from each other, like she taught me how to add that super like crisp 
breath sound like on top of the vocals and then I was showing her like she wanted to go right to sampler I was like well let's chop it up and put it in drum rack first and like try that out so that was like one of my strategies like taking the sound stretching out a lot of the pad sounds you hear are like straight from the sample like stretched out like those chords were really nice that's the first thing I noticed and those um, percussion hits that almost sounds like a, a weird sort of like marimba but if it was hit with like a rubber mallet or something like chop that up turn that into a lead turned it into a drum all that what was the process like of, of working together, of like collaborating on something? Um, because I know like when I collaborate with someone, it almost doesn't matter how well I know them, how long I've known them for, like it, it, there's always a little bit of some kind of friction to overcome, you know, when you're trying to get into this group. But to have put something like that together so quickly, um, tell us about what that was like. I think we got along well really quick. We kind of like vibed. But then also, I think really quickly we learned that there was a lot we could learn from each other. Oh, yeah. So once we just started working, it's like either Sarah was over my shoulder watching what I was doing, or I was over her shoulder watching what she was doing, just trading back and forth with the laptop. I don't know. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> and you, like, he does a lot of stuff with kids, teaching them, and so he's great at collaborating. I uh, usually have to collaborate when you write for commercials and stuff, you got a lot of songwriters in the room, so you got to get along and get that song done. So that's like skills that we bring with each other into that experience. Awesome. Uh, where can people find you? Um, I'm pretty much everywhere. Sarah Brown Music on Instagram or Spotify, YouTube, wherever. <laughs> yeah, go check her, her track on Spotify. Sarah with no H, by the way. Sarah Brown, no H. And um, I have videos on YouTube, youtube.com slash Tatro. I'm also vlogging from Loop, so you can all say hi. Maybe I'll put this in, I don't know. Um, I'm vlogging and actually in the video I just finished editing is gonna have like our, like some clips of us writing and recording this track in the room. So like if you stay, go to the channel tonight, T-A-E-T-R-O, and you can find it and you'll see how we put all the track together. Yeah. yeah. Dope. Thanks. That'll thanks be great for putting to check on out. track, thank you. Yeah, thanks so much. Great work. Thank you guys for joining. Um, this sample challenge is all about like celebrating the diversity of, of creative approaches, of, of musical approaches, of everyone's like individual creative mind, and uh, I think that's also like what Loop is about, and I think why you're all here. Um, thanks for joining us here. I hope you enjoyed this panel. Go out and create some music. <laughs>